Hi, this is TR for Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine. Today we've got a lovely Imperial to show you. Now there's nowhere listed on this machine where it is made because it was imported into Canada. I'm going to guess made in Japan and the motor has a label on it that says Electro Home, Kitchener, Canada. There's a sticker here from an old, uh, probably where the machine was first sold. Um, Polson Place Mall in Vernon, British Columbia. <clears throat> so we've got a Canadian Japanese machine here. Look at the lovely color scheme on this Imperial. You've got this buttercream and and cerulean robin's egg blue. This machine, look at this. The foot control even matches. I mean, you can sit down to this machine and feel elegant. Let me tell you. Because put that down there. Of course, the Imperial has a built-in light. The switch is a little hard to find, was for me anyhow, but it's just right over here. A little push switch, instant light. This Imperial is a left needle high shank. Remember that when you're going to buy your attachments? High shank, left needle. This will matter if you want to buy things like rufflers, buttonholers, stuff like that. That's the, where the machine naturally sews its straight stitch. We have a zigzag here, which we can manually make bigger and smaller. Look at that wonderful indicator dial there. Now, if you want to zigzag at a certain position, you lock it down with this button. Give it a little twist. When you want to set your zigzag, say you want to stay at three, you put it there, and you lock it down. And then it stays at three. You can hit reverse and back, and you stay at three. Here's your stitch length knob. Now this is also shows that it's a Canadian Japanese machine. This is a metric indicator. It goes from zero to five. And that is, I think, stitches per centimeter. So for others, those of us who are used to the Singer, um, 12, 15, 18, 20, two and a half is about where you want to be sewing. Look, they've got the nice little red line there so you know where you're at. Reverse is right in the center. Let's thread this baby up and see how it sews. The upper section is a high shank left needle. The underneath side is a basic Singer Class 15 bobbin. Probably familiar with this and the bobbin case. Goes in underneath. With the little finger pointing up. Let your bobbin thread hang down. Let's thread the top. You can sew double needle on this if you get the correct one for the high shank left needle. I think that's the one where the needle shank actually is offset, not centered. Go through these here. And there's a slot right there. And up over the check spring. What's that called? Down through the hook. Pigtail, take up lever, and then down through another pigtail and through the needle. The imperial threads from left to right. When you put in the needle, the flat side faces the right. This is true with all manual zigzag machines. I don't know an exact manufacture date on this machine, but guessing on the styling and the color, I'm going to guess somewhere between 1957 and 1965. Okay, there we've got our wheel thread. So now let's bring up our bobbin thread. For machines like this, always turn the hand wheel towards you. And there's our bottom thread, just like that. Tuck those back under the presser foot. And let's get a piece of fabric and sew. Here's some chambray shirting, a very common sort of fabric that you might have in your sewing room. Very similar in weight to calico, muslin, that sort of thing. Let's sew a straight stitch. So that means we'll want to have our, loosen this, so our zigzag. That takes us back to zero. Tighten it to stay at zero. 
if you want to alternate zigzag manually, leave the lock undone. Give it a little power. And we're stitching along a nice, beautiful, look at a really solid sewing machine this is. Reverse. Forward. Let's try that zigzag. Really excellent balance tension. Nice performance on basic double layer of medium weight cotton. Okay, let's fold this over a few times. We'll show you a few more things. We got about 12 layers here. Keep it on straight stitch, but let's take it back up to about oh five. If you were gonna sew a heavier fabric, you'd want to have a longer stitch. Yeah, now I want to show you. You're pretty darn slow with this guy. And you can go. Got a great range of speeds there. And really good consistent stitch. Let's try a few heavier fabrics and see what we've got. Now we always show our machines here with a basic size 14 needle in, which can handle most of your sewing chores. Well, let's give it a little denim and see what happens. This is some old, my husband's old jeans here. Let's fold that over, oh, this four times with one of those big fat seams in the middle. Give it a long stitch length. Straight stitch. Mm, look at that. Not a problem. Now, for jeans, you might want to have a little more pressure on your foot. Push your patch matic all the way down. We've got our feed as high as it goes. Got some more pressure on that foot now. Goes right over the top of that. No problem. Let's just go off of that piece onto a couple layers of bonded leather here. Some old leather jacket. Let's just fold that over. This guy under there. Got a lot of lift room under this. Now if you're going to sew a project with leather or denim, you should get the correct needles for that project. A size 16, 18 sharp for denim, a size 16 or 18 leather needle for leather, or even down to a 14 or 11 if you're sewing glove leather or kit. This machine would be good for any of those things. Very nice seam there. Now, notice how I put the pressure down on this. There's another technique you can do with this machine very easily, which is free motion embroidery or drop feed. Take all the pressure off by pushing the outer ring. Releases the pressure on this part. Push this to lower your feet. Now you have control of the feed. Recommended that you put your fabric in a hoop for this sort of technique and have an applique foot on. Let's put a little zigzag on that and lock it at about two. So we can get a Of a free motion thing going here. You can outline, you know, you know what to do. Free motion is very easy with this machine because of the drop feed and the patch matted. The regular sewing again. There you go, about halfway down there. Pushing this up to the red line will give you a silk setting for lighter fabric. It will still feed, but gently. We hope you've enjoyed our presentation of the Imperial. This machine could be yours. It's beautiful, it's solid, it's sturdy. It was imported to Canada from Japan. It's a piece of history in the mid-century. It can be yours at Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine. Thanks.